FM, America's solution to accuracy in reporting. Hey there, I'm RFN President William Sloth Druthers. Recently, a third-party media watchdog organization has decided to flex its dubious muscle in order to threaten my young and fledging legitimate news corporation. In the schoolyard, we'd refer to such a meddler as a bully and wait for it at recess to begin eating its mom-packaged toaster strudel before pulling its polo over its head, its arms now flailing through its tattered shirt bottom so that it may be whipped with our bicycle locks. In the current cultural climate, however, it's appropriate for us to enter into a relationship of understanding with this intermediary and acquiesce to the effrontery of its recommendations with no concern at all for their imbecile impropriety. To that end, we here at RFN make the following corrections to a number of our previous broadcasts. So here goes. RFN apologizes for our morning roll call, which I choose to broadcast internationally, in which the different radio personalities and their teams are referred to by my nicknames for them, of which Anti Pussy and Ball Gag are among the more provocative. RFN apologizes for Belen Nisbet's October 2019 broadcast in which he uttered a certain racial slur. Even though he was simply quoting a tweet authored by his guest, he should have simply let the audience members use their imagination. Maybe make it a game, like saying, when someone has a deficiency in their seemingly impenetrable exterior, they are said to have a blank in their armor, at which time he could have chosen to take calls from the audience until such time that the correct answer of chink was submitted and then nimbly move on from there. Arfin apologizes to all the families affected by Chris Permy's choice to surprise interview magnate Sybil Tram mid-skydive. Earlier this week, Dirk Yeager's moment aired, but was just as soon removed from our archives, when it was discovered that he made guest Arnold Wells audibly uncomfortable. This was unfortunate, but I still maintain that describing in minutia the physical and emotional and deviantly sexual traumas from one's youth is a roundabout but effective way to carry out an interview. I hasten to mention here that the collection of poetry, which Mr. Wells was promoting that day, has since seen a not insignificant rise in sales. The Jaeger bump, as we refer to it here at RFN, and Wells should be happy to benefit from it. And yet we apologize. Recently, Chip Dordikos very carefully navigated through a discussion with the very special and very special James Joyce Loden of SilentSpace.com in which a gross and nearly unforgivable foible was perpetrated. On behalf of myself, Chip, and all of RFN, I'd like to offer my sincerest apologies. As it turns out, Sammy had no business whatsoever being Chip's guest in honor of, as Chip put it during the broadcast, Mental Awareness Month. It is, in fact, only a week-long duration of awareness. That's right, Mental Awareness Week, and we are very pleased that our little buddy was such a big and significant part of it. He gets our Blue Ribbon Award. We were informed by our media watchdog partner that only some of our corrections, uh, those just mentioned, require a degree of explanation, while a minority of other so-called offenses, those I am about to mention, we are permitted to simply prattle off. So here goes. We are real, real sorry for the following. Lane Lanigan's reference to American Indians as American instigators. Dirk Yeager's differentiation between sponsors that he likes and sponsors that he talks about because they pay him. Luna Lip's entire late night program. Forcing all hosts and attempting to force all guests to affect a lisp or speech impediment during Pride Week. The dead air on Dirk Yeager's moment when he refused to speak with his guest from the NAACP so that he'd understand how it was when things were really bad. Terrence Smith's Memorial Day broadcast in which he slipped in the phrase Patriots falling to the sword a total of 11 times, making his Army veteran guest truly agitated. Elmer Merritt's show in which he put the thesis that dogs can be trained like kids to the test by locking his guest Lizzie Satt's pet in the janitor's closet and challenging it with mathematical equations, yelling at it when it couldn't answer. Again, more apologies than you can shake a stick at. I'm Frank Sloth Shelley for RFN, America's solution to accuracy in reporting. If you like the content you've seen here, please like and subscribe 